Yeah. So uh, this is my website qtpselenium.com. If you go to the uh, Selenium training section, you will see various modules over here. Okay. I have divided the whole course into 40 modules. Four zero. Okay. Now the duration of these modules is very big. I have made videos on every modules as well. So along with this course, what you will be getting is you will be getting the videos for all the 40 modules and you will be getting the lifetime access to these videos. You will be getting a login username and password like this. I will just take 5 minutes of ti your time to just explain you what you, this course is all about and what you will be getting because many people have been asking me this question. You will be getting a username and a password and once you log in into your account, okay, you will have access to all the modules, you will have the watch now buttons enabled on all the modules and you can access them, you can watch the videos. Now apart from these videos, these are the pre-recorded videos, okay, apart from these you will be getting your batch recordings. What is the meaning of batch recordings? The recordings which we are doing in the current session, okay. Uh, if you go to your uh, account and click over here, click for online batch recordings, if you click on this link, you will be getting a page like this where you have to enter your batch ID. Once you enter your batch ID, you will be getting the recorded sessions for those, for that particular batch, okay. Now these recorded sessions which we are keeping here, okay, the recorded sessions of this classroom will be available to you for next two months after the course, okay. The current recordings which we are doing, they will be available to you for two months after the course. The recordings out here which are the pre-recorded sessions, right, the recordings of the 40 modules, you will get lifetime access to those. That will never expire, okay. So these modules you, you can access forever, okay. The contents will be the same as the contents of the course. Only thing is the course recordings, the batch recordings will stay there for two months after the course. Alright. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me, right? Or else we can start with Selenium now. Okay. Regarding the course, any kind of question if you are having, you can ask me. Right. Now, uh, talking about uh, Selenium as a tool. It's quite an old tool, right? It's not something new which has come up in the market, but it's lately got lot of um, importance and it's got really famous. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll be covering uh, the first uh, 21 modules. We'll be covering Java and WebDriver in the course along with the frameworks and the and we'll also study about JUnit or test ng. So we'll be doing complete end-to-end -end, uh, course and, and I'll be providing you the complete solution. Fine. And if you want to learn something else, for example, uh, you want to learn how to do flash testing with Selenium or topics like, like those, if you want to learn about Maven and all, for those I will be giving you the videos. Okay, you'll be having the access to the videos. For example, training video 28 and 29 is on flash testing and all. Or if you want to learn about something else like database testing and all with this, so you can use this uh, videos base. I cannot cover so much in the training because the videos are over 80 hours, 80 to 85 hours, right? The training is for around 20 hours, right? So I'll be covering Java WebDriver frameworks and JUnit test engine all in course. Okay. Any other question? Uh, you wanted to join the training, okay, you can join, just a minute. I'm sorry in the first day, some, a little bit of delay, it does definitely take, take this. So now, let's start, talk about uh, Selenium. Uh, Selenium as a tool, it's quite old. When I looked at it for the first time, it was 2007. Out there, we had something known as RC. Okay, things have significantly changed now. 
right? Let me start with a little bit of history of Selenium, what Selenium is all about. Okay, we will be having the first five classes as trial classes. Okay, so we will be do learning a lot of Selenium in, in those trial classes as well. Okay, now when Selenium came up for the very first time, uh, we had these things in place. Okay. Selenium as a tool is not a single tool. It's it got it's it's got a lot of things inside it. Okay. So there are there were three components majorly in the beginning. One was known as Selenium RC, one as ID, one as grid. Okay. Now ID was something which could actually test your websites on only Mozilla. This used to only work on Mozilla. But it was very it is very powerful. It's a very powerful tool. Okay. Selenium RC as a tool it could work on multiple browsers. Okay. But it required you to learn any one of the programming languages like Java, PHP, Perl, C sharp, Ruby, etc. Okay. ID was not ID is not such, such a thing which would require you to learn such programming languages. Okay. Only thing is ID only works on Mozilla. Right. So many companies what they did, they started implementing RC in their projects because RC was having multiple browser support in it. Okay. Now they were very uh, you can say there were drawbacks in RC, right? There were very major drawbacks in RC which shouldn't be there in any automation tool. So what these guys did was, along with Google, okay, they evolved something into something known as web driver. So these days, last year it came up. It's been all, almost one year that the web driver has come up in the market web driver came up fine id it remained the same only thing is the version it came up a new version came up for id so ide it remains same and grid Something known as GRID2 has come up in the market. Now, what is GRID? Just a minute. Okay, GRID evolved into GRID2. Now, GRID helps you to execute your test cases parallelly across multiple systems. What we do in GRID is that we make one machine a hub. Okay, and all the other machines, they are connected to the hub and the test cases are executed parallelly on those machines. So the grid is used for that. So this whole thing is Selenium. Okay, now it's, it's not a single tool, it's got various components inside it. And when you are going for an interview, you don't know whether you will be asked about Selenium RC or WebDriver, grid 1 or grid 2. Because if the company has implemented RC way back in 2008, and it 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 will it will be still using it. Okay, it it won't it won't go to web driver like that. So they'll ask you questions on RC, and it's not necessary to learn RC in order to learn web driver. RC and web driver are two completely different tools. Okay, you cannot. There is no similarity in them. There is no connection in them. You don't need to learn RC in order to learn WebDriver. It's not like that. People who have worked on RC for five years, when they look at WebDriver, it looks as an altogether new tool to them. But WebDriver is really good. They have uh, rem removed a lot of disadvantages of RC in WebDriver. Okay. So now in this course, we'll be studying Selenium with Java language, the web driver with Java. Web driver also supports all these languages. Java, C sharp, Ruby and all, all these languages are supported and multiple browsers are also supported by web driver. Okay. Now what were the drawbacks of RC? The question being asked is what were the drawbacks of RC? 
primary drawback was there there used to be a server in rc which you had to start and stop and sometimes it was really used to be a headache because the server never used to start and you had to log off and log out of your system or something like that so that was the primary disadvantage in web driver there is no server you simply execute the code okay secondly a, a simple functionality like uh, for example there is a web page and you need to print the names of all the links on the web page a very simple functionality like this this no function okay no function was provided in rc to do this work in web driver we have it if you are using an automation tool any tool like qtp self test every tool has a mechanism through which you can extract all the links of the page and print the names a simple functionality like this was not there in rc so there were drawbacks in rc primary one was server which i guess because i i used to end up really wasting my time starting up the server stopping the server and all of okay any other question please feel free to ask me question you can ask the question by uh moving a mouse on the top of the window going to the chat icon and ask me the question through webex chat or you can actually ask a question through uh skype as well fine so if you are clear if you don't have any questions okay i can proceed further or else if you have questions because certainly in almost all the batches which i ask which i start many people have lot of questions so i jot down the questions in an excel file and answer them one by one question regarding the course regarding the tool any doubt over the tool whether well, well, what we'll be covering in the course anything okay please feel free to ask all right I, i'll note down your questions over here and i'll answer can you help in ruby testing okay the question being asked by rupa is about ruby testing well answer is <laughs> no i cannot help it i am not expert in ruby okay i am not an expert in ruby right uh, no i cannot uh, i cannot help in that fine so uh, now let's start with selenium okay uh, today i'll be starting with basics of java with you right tomorrow most probably i'll uh, i'll actually uh, start over with selenium okay i cannot just start with selenium directly i'll give you the reason behind it is selenium overtake qtp market well um five years back lot of companies used to use qtp but right now the share of selenium is increasing it 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 cannot take the qtp market okay because qtp can test desktop based applications as well selenium is only for web based applications selenium can only test your applications which work on a browser only for web based qtp can do web and desktop both okay firstly secondly um in my personal opinion i have worked on both the tools i find qtp to be a better tool so those companies who have got a budget they will certainly go for qtp it's no no matter it's a very professional tool it's it's much better than selenium because selenium is an open source uh it's quite vast you can do anything in it right that's the advantage of selenium but qtp it 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 is like uh, it's, it's a very easy tool qtp anybody can go and use it okay it, it's not a very complicated tool fine so that's the thing uh how much i have to pay for the demo code look the course fee is constant you can see on the website along with that you will get the code as well what are the limitations of selenium well, the firstly it's only for web based applications okay and then sometimes what happens to test flash based applications to test silver light based applications and all it really becomes difficult okay thirdly you have to have a programming you have to have a knowledge of programming language like java right and you have to have in depth knowledge of core java if you you know it it never takes a lot of time for java developers to learn selenium just one day or two days because if you have a very good knowledge in java then i can say that it's quite easy to learn this tool okay, i've seen so many people so many developers just catching up this tool very easily so that's why you know uh, it is advisable to learn the programming language first and then this tool this is the mistake which most of the people do they directly jump over to selenium they don't concentrate on the 
basics of programming language. Yeah, Rupa, I'll, I'll answer a question. Okay. So, sorry for that. Yeah. When a program is written in Ruby, can I write Selenium in Java and test it? You'll have to understand the program code. Yes, you can do it. If the program is written in Ruby, you'll have to understand the program code and then implement the same logic in Java. You can do it. Okay. Now, many times people, what they think is that if this is your test website, right, and suppose the website is made in PHP, and you have to test that website using Selenium. Now, many times people are under the impression that you have to use Selenium with PHP. No, it's not like that. I can use, I can write my Selenium code in Java and I can test my PHP application with it or I can test my C-Sharp application with it. So the language in which the application is made is not necessary. Okay? The language in which the application is made is not necessary. Like, you, you don't have to use Selenium with that language in order to test that application. No, it's not like that. Okay? So, you can use Selenium with any programming language. Now, why we are using it with Java? Why we are going to study it with Java? Firstly, Java is an open source language. Okay? 70% of the people in the market use Selenium with Java. 70 to 80%. Rest of them use with Ruby. Ruby is quite famous. Okay? And Python and C Sharp. These are the language languages with which it is quite famous. All right. So uh, now, in order to learn it with Java, right? First, you need to have the concepts of object-oriented programming clear with you, because many times uh, what people do is that. Hold on, I'll just tell you. They directly dump over to Selenium without knowing Java. And many people they come to me with saying that there is no documentation for Selenium. You cannot find good documentation for Selenium on the internet and all. You have the complete documentation for Selenium. I have also learned Selenium from that documentation. Okay? This is the Java version of Selenium. I'll I'll actually tell you how to download and configure it later on. But if you look at this link over here, this is the Java document. This means the documentation for Selenium. But the problem is that this documentation is completely technical. Okay. A normal being who is not aware of Java language cannot understand this documentation. So, in order to understand this, okay, you need to understand Java first. And secondly, this complete, <coughs> I'm sorry, this complete documentation is object oriented in nature. Okay, so you need to have the concepts of object oriented programming very clear in order to understand this documentation. So first I'll be teaching you Java, I'll be teaching you the concepts of object oriented programming and then I'll come out to Selenium most probably by tomorrow. Okay, right, so let's start with Java. To start with Java, I guess everybody has Java installed on their machines and uh, secondly, you just need to download Eclipse. Eclipse is like just an editor for Java. Okay, if you already know Java, then please be patient, okay, because there are people in the training who don't have a background in Java. What I'll be doing is I'll be teaching you the concepts of Java and the concepts of Selenium parallelly in a very systematic way. Okay, I'll teach you Java and then I'll tell you how to use this in Selenium. Okay, first of all, you need to download Eclipse. You can go to Eclipse Downloads and rather download this one, Eclipse ID for Java EE Developers. If you go here, you will see that, hold on, yeah, this is the one, 221 MB, Eclipse ID for Java EE Developers. This is 64-bit version, 32-bit version. If you have a 64-bit machine with you, okay, then please make sure that you have installed JDK because these days many machines are coming 64 bit. Instead of you can just simply write download JDK and go to Java SC downloads. This is only for 64 bit machines. Okay. Please install JDK in order to work with Eclipse, right? If you are having a 64 bit machine, you can download JDK from here. 
and simply work with it. I'll give you the URL over WebEx chat as well. This is for JDK. I'm giving it to everybody. And this is for Eclipse. All right. Now, once you have downloaded Eclipse, it comes as a bundle. Fine. In my machine, it's out here. You can, when you extract Eclipse, it comes in a folder like this. You open up the folder and you will see Eclipse.exe file. That's it. It's not installable. It's it's like a bundle. You start it and Eclipse will start. Right. Now this is the path for workspace where you will be storing all the code. Okay. It's very important. I'll create a new workspace for your batch. September weekday. Okay. I'll copy this path and when you go over to this path, you will observe that under workspaces, uh, September weekday, you see that this folder is generated. Okay. If you open up this folder, this is your workspace. This is the place where we, where we will be storing all the code. All right now, uh, this is the welcome screen of Eclipse, right? You can click on this cross and close it. Right. So this is the portion where we'll be doing all the coding. On the left hand side, we'll be storing the projects and all, and at the bottom, we'll be seeing the results. Okay, in a very outline manner, I've told you. Right. So let's first make the first Eclipse project a simple Java project. Okay. Now why am I teaching you Java is because when you execute the Java code, Selenium executes. So all your Selenium code will be written inside Eclipse itself. For example, if anybody has worked on QTP, right, we sometimes open QTP IDE and write the code inside it. Okay. Now similarly in Selenium, there is no user interface. This is also what somebody was asking me the drawback. There is no user interface like QTP, a user friendly user interface. You simply have to write the code in Eclipse. Okay. So I'll just create a new project. I'll call that project day one. You select Java project from here. If you don't see this option, you can expand Java from here and you will see the option Java project. Okay. Click on next and then give the project name. Right. Next and finish. Click on yes out here. I'll tell you what this yes is all about perspective. Okay. Once you have done this, you will see on the left hand side a project with day name is created. Day one is created. This is the source folder and this is the JRE system library. Okay. If you go to your physical path where you have created the workspace, in that physical path you will be able to see the folder day one created. This is the project. Okay. Under this folder, you will have the source folder, bin folder, dot settings and all everything. Okay. Source folder is the one which is visible out here in your day one project. The bin folder is not there. All the other files are not there. I'll talk about all of these. Okay, but first let us consider the source folder. The source folder will be the one in which we actually create or keep all the classes. Okay, all the classes, all the Java files are kept under the source folder. Okay, so in the source folder I will create a new class. Right click on the source folder, new class. Name that class, for example, I'll, I'll name that class as sample underscore Java. Okay. And click on this checkbox, public static void main, right? And click on finish. So what will happen is that you will automatically get a file like this. Okay. What I'll do is I'll go to Windows. I'll just increase my font size. Hold on because you know it will be very small for you hold on okay i think the font is okay now right so this is the sample java 
and this is the main function. Inside the main function, I'll write system dot out dot print ln. Hello. So this is the main function in which the control will come for the very first time when the program is executed. Okay. And system dot out dot print ln is the command to print something. For example, many of you might have learned the C language. In that also there is a main function in which the command comes up when you run the program for the first time. And printf is the command to uh, print something. So this is the command in Java to print something. Okay. What public is, what static is, what void is and all, I'll cover these things. Okay. It will take around two to three classes to cover them because these are related to the concepts of object oriented programming and modifiers. So just accept some things as they are, understand that the control will come inside the main function when you run this, okay. We will talk about these wordings later on and when you execute this file, hello will be printed. How do we execute the file with Eclipse? Uh, this is the icon on the top, this play icon, this one. It helps you to execute the code. If you run this, if you click on this, your code will be executed. You see that hello gets printed or you can right click on your file, go to run as Java application. Okay, if you run this, hello will be printed. So this is the command system that out dot print element to print something. The shortcut is you can write SYSO and hit control spacebar of your command, of your keyboard. Okay, SYSO plus control plus spacebar. I'll be giving you the code made in all the modules, okay, also along with that, whatever code we are making in the class, I will be giving you that code as well along the course, okay. so, that, so that you can refer the working code, right, so also this session is being recorded, so you'll get the recorded session as well, fine, so this is uh, how you print something, now like every programming language, I'm assuming you know a little bit of programming, okay, there is integer, there is uh, string out here in Java, okay. Then we have double slash means a comment, okay. That means the line will be inactive, okay. Then uh, you have long, right. For example, if you write int i equals 200 and long k equals to some other number, Difference is that the size of long is bigger than the size of int. This is approximately 32 bit. This is approximately 64 bit. If you have a big number to store, okay, then you can use long, right? But most of the times int does the work. Similarly, there is a string which can hold multiple characters together. You can write string x equals to hello there, something like this. Okay, so I'm assuming you know basic stuff like if statement, for loops, and all. Right. If you are, if you want to refresh of the thing, if you don't know, then after the course, go to my website, qtpselenium.com, and go to online selenium training section, and just watch the first two videos. They are open to everybody. The video number one and video number two. These two videos they are open to everybody. You can just have a look at them. It explains basics of loops and everything on the website, right? So if you, like there's a for loop, while loop, if statement, if you want to learn about that, you can learn from there, right? Now, let's talk about what happens when you run this program, okay? When you run this program, um, if you look at the output, the folder in which you kept everything, in the source folder, you had kept sample java.java .java, .java file, this file, okay. When you execute this file with the help of Eclipse, what happens is that Eclipse generates the class file which is stored inside the bin folder. Corresponding to every java file, a dot class file is generated and that dot class file is stored inside the bin directory. Okay, in the bin directory that file is stored, if you open up this file, you will not be able to understand anything in it. It's all jumbled up, right? You will not be able to understand it, right? This is like an executable file, 
If you have to give the client, if client asks for code and all, he can give this file to him. He will not be able to understand what's written in it, but he will be able to execute this file. Okay. Now this is what we did and this is what we do when we actually go and execute something, right? When we release the products in the market. For example, somebody made Java. Okay. Generally in projects what happens is we don't make one Java file. We make 1000 Java files or 2000 Java files and we need to deliver those files to the client so that he can execute it at, the, at his end. Right. So we don't give him the source code. We give him all the class files. Okay. So how do I give my client 1000 class files? There is just one Java file and one class file here. But in real time projects there are many Java files. Okay, and corresponding to each Java file is a class file. I cannot ask my client to download each class file individually. Okay. What I can do is I can zip all the class files into a simple file and ask the, ask the client to download that zipped file. Okay. In Java the concept is a little different. In Java we call that zipped file a jar file. What a jar file is that? A jar file is like there are many class files, dot class files. Corresponding to every Java file, there is a dot class file. What we do is that we put all the jar files into a, sorry, we put all the class files into a single file called as dot jar file, sorry, dot jar. And we ask the client to download that particular jar file ok so now if you look at this thing over here JRE system library what is this this is Java which was installed on your system in order to work with Eclipse make sure Java is installed on your system ok now <coughs> uh, guys just one Okay, and if you expand any jar file, you will see that there are number of class files inside one jar file. Okay, so these are the already available classes for us. Okay, and already available code written by somebody um, who made Java and he has given this to us. Right. So every jar file has got lot of class files in it. Okay. So Java is nothing but collection of jar files. And similarly, what the Selenium guys did, they made everything. Okay. They made everything, and then they put everything into. All, suppose they made 1,000 classes. Okay. They put all the classes into a single file called as the jar file. And then they asked us to download these jar files and include them in Eclipse. Selenium is not installed, it is configured. Okay. You have to download the jar files for Selenium from uh, the Selenium website and you have to include them in your project along with the jar files of Java. Okay. Now how do you download that? If you are not able to understand, please let me know, I will repeat it for you. Okay. So you, you have to download Selenium. Okay. Now to download Selenium, you need to go to Google and just type Selenium download and go to the first link out here and you can download the latest version that is 2.25 from here. When you download this thing, what you get is you get a folder like this. I have two. I have two dot two four right now with me, but it doesn't make a big difference. Learn it, right? To start with it. So if you open up this folder, you will see two jar files over here. Okay, and if you open up the libs folder, you will see many other jar files. So all these jar files 
along with the two jar files over here are the jar files for selenium there is no exe there is nothing for selenium many times people have told ask me that how do i install selenium there is nothing known as installing selenium you just have to download the jar files each of these jar files is having lot of classes in them okay classes similar to the one which we have made out okay. but those classes are pre built they are or they are already made by the people who made selenium okay. the api is already built in okay now how do i include the selenium jar files in this project to include the selenium jar files in this project you need to right click on this project and go to the properties section when you go to the properties of the project you will see under resource the path where the project is lying okay you have to go to this third option java build path and eclipse and go to the library section out here in the library section you will already see the jre system library which is the java which was installed in the system and this is jre system library is also there in the project okay and you can click on the button out here add external jars right when you click on this you simply have to go and import the jar files which you just downloaded you have to get this to and also the one under the lid many times people forget these two jar files these are the main jar files for selenium please don't forget these okay and also go inside the lid folder and include these jar files put all the jar files ones which are there in the lid and also the other two don't forget to do that right and click on okay once you have done that in eclipse you will see the referenced library section over here okay under the reference library section if you expand this right you will see the jar files for selenium included in the project right now okay and you have to use the classes inside these jar files to work with selenium that's all that's how we configure selenium okay but to work further on with this thing you need to understand the concepts of object oriented programming in java okay i'll not talk about selenium as of now i just asked i uh, just explain you how to download it but to work with it you need to understand the object oriented programming concepts because the architecture of selenium is completely object oriented if you don't understand that there is no firm, uh, meaning going on right further you can't go further right so what i'll do is i'll create a new class here a uh, class named suppose a very simple class called book okay there is no main function in it like one i had created here i am not creating the main function here what i'll do is i'll declare a variable inside it called string main okay i am i have created a class book and i have created a variable say book name okay and i am going to create a new class called test book dot java in this test book dot java i will create the main function okay and now we will study how to create objects of classes what are objects and how do we create them how they are useful to us okay we are going to study that now to create the object of the book class the syntax is this new book this is how you create the object of the book class if i create three objects like this what happens in the memory is that hold on uh you have you you get an option like this three objects of the book class are created each of the object will have the copy of the variable book name okay three objects each object will have the copy book name 
but in order to access in order to access these objects you need to write like this book b1 equals to new book book b2 equals to new book and book b3 equals to new book b1 b2 and b3 are known as the object references okay there is a difference between object and object reference these three are objects and b1 b2 and b3 are the object references with b1 b2 and b3 i can alter the state of the object what do you mean by that altering the state of the object is like this if if i write b1 dot you will get the option book name okay if i write b1 dot book name is a and b2 dot book name is b and b3 dot book name is c okay what will happen is that each of these objects okay will have the book names as a b and c this will have a b c okay so each object reference can alter the state of the object if i write now over here system dot out dot print in b1 dot book name and b2 dot book name and b3 dot book name and i run the code you will see the options coming up a b and c so the book name for b1 is a book name for b2 is b book name for b3 is c okay now what is the importance of object references if i change the object reference if i write b1 equals to b2 in the memory what will happen is that b1 will go away from here this object is kept hanging in the memory it will be destroyed because there is no object reference and b1 will point towards the same object where b2 is pointing to that is b object references they can be changed they are just like handles okay so if i write the same thing again system dot out dot print ln b1 dot name b2 dot name b3 dot name hold on it will print the same name for b1 and b2 okay that is b if you run this you will see the output like this both b1 and b2 are pointing towards the same object so this is the concept of object and object references in book dot java i just have one variable book name but by creating three objects of this class i can assign three different book names and object references they can be moved over from one object to another now after this suppose i write b1 dot book name equals to x so what will happen in the memory this b will be replaced by x okay and if i write again b1 dot system dot out dot print ln b1 dot book name this is going to print x but b2 dot book name will also print x because b1 and b2 are pointing towards the same object okay so this thing is very important one object reference can change the state of the object okay? but the other object reference will get the updated value if you run this code now you will see this thing getting printed so this is the concept of objects and object references okay now suppose in this class right i make a simple function i hope i i'm just taking a simple uh i'm just hoping you have a simple background on what functions are if you don't know what functions are i just told you to watch the first two videos today and you'll be clear 
just go to my site and watch video number one and video number two. It's open for everybody. Okay. So you write public void. Suppose print name function in it. And this will write system dot out dot print and then book name. Okay. Or if you have to concatenate like this, name of the book is plus book name. Okay. You write system dot out dot print and then name of the book is and you concatenate the variable book name with it like this. You can do it. Right. And I go here and I can call this function like this as well. When you write b1 dot, now you will get the option print name over here as well. Okay, if you write b1 dot, you will get an option. Hold on. Print name. The function print name will be available. Okay. Similarly, b2 dot print name and b3 dot print name. Okay. If you look at diagrammatically, what happens is the print name function, you can say, Along with the book name, the print name function has a copy in every object. I'm sorry for this little mess up, right? <laughs> so, when you write b1.printName, this print name function will print the name of b1, which is x, right? So, I mean to say that the same function is being called, but by different objects. But by different object references, same function is being called and that particular function will actually print the name of the book, right, will print the name of the book with which that is associated, the, well, the one which is in the object. Okay, so if you run this, this will print name of the book is X, name of the book is X, name of the book is C. This is because B1 is X, B2 is X, and B3 is C. <coughs> Sorry. Right. So, technically, technically, in this class, we call this variable as non-static global variable. Technically, this function is known as non-static function. Okay. Technically, these are the words given to it. Okay. Now, how this thing is helpful in Selenium? Okay. Now, whosoever made Selenium made all the files, everything in it. And we just need to create the objects of those files. For example, if you look at the Java doc for Selenium, in this, we have got a file like Firefox driver class. This is an inbuilt class. This class is made by the people who made Selenium and this Firefox driver class is somewhere lying inside the jar files which we have imported in the project. Okay, so all I need to do is that I'll, I'll create a new class called sample underscore selenium. All I need to do is that I just write to, I just need to create, write new Firefox driver over here. Okay. Firefox driver is an inbuilt class inside these reference libraries. Okay. You will get an error over here. You just move your mouse over the error. You will get an option to import this class from the library. In test book, what I had done, I had created the object of the book class by writing new book. Book class, fortunately, I had made myself. But, but in this uh, sample menu, okay, uh, just a minute guys, uh, 
If you have to ask the question, then unmute your mouth. You can unmute your mic during the process. Right. So uh, during uh, this, if I write, if I import this class, you can import it like this. Right. And new Firefox driver I have written over here. I have created the object of the internal class of Selenium called Firefox driver. And when you run this code, you will see that a blank Firefox window will open up. You see that? Okay. But I cannot do anything with this window. Right. I need to get the object reference. What? we will do is we will write like this Firefox uh -oh. Firefox driver D1 equals to new Firefox driver and then you write D1 dot you will see all the n functions which are available in the Firefox driver class for example when you, I used to write B1 dot I used to get the option book name, print name, these are the functions. Similarly, when I write Firefox driver D1 dot, I get all these functions which are there made by the people who made Selenium. They are available to us. For example, one of the functions is get function. Okay. If, if you write in this HTTP, suppose gmail.com what will happen is that Firefox will open up and it will simply go to gmail.com if you run this you will see that a Firefox browser has opened and it is going to gmail fine similarly if I write Firefox driver d2 over here and d2 I take it to yahoo.com okay and I run this, you will see that, oh sorry, it should be just on advance. D2. Okay. So D1 will go to Gmail and D2 will go to Yahoo. If you run this, two browsers will open up. The first one will go to Gmail. You see that this goes to Gmail and another browser will open up which will go to yahoo.com. Okay. So the thing is, that's why I told you the concepts of objects are very important. The concepts of object oriented programming are very important. Right? When I create this object, there is a different reference with it. When I create this object, there is a different, refer different reference with it and both of them they go to different URLs although the function being called is same by both of them okay so um, I guess I'll stop here for today okay.